Running errands, I'm fixing things on the van. Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be going over some of the last minute things that I am doing before I head out back on the road after a brief stay at base camp. Some big projects have been done but it's time to wrap it all together and tie it together with a little bow of happiness which means I got some work to do. I'm about to leave CVS where I did one of my projects which you'll be seeing in just a few minutes clouds are kind of building so I'm hoping that I get all this done before the storm comes in. Bunny, what did you do at CVS that is for your van? It's, it's CVS, it's, it's a drugstore. Like normally you wouldn't do things for your van at the drugstore. Oh, but I did. I'm gonna be actually doing some cool things in the back to personalize my space just a little bit. And I'm really excited about this. This right here, this was the finishing touch for one of those little special things. So uh, I'll show you more whenever we get back to base camp. Let's go. Okay, I'm back at base camp. It's time to get to work. We have a few things to do, but I want to show you something first before we start on the big projects. I picked something up that's going to be super, super useful. Inside this bag right here is going to be an awesome solution for my windows. I am so excited. I picked this up on Amazon. I'm going to link them below. Um, this is kind of a cool thing, and I think you're going to see why in just a second. Now, currently, you, you've probably seen my windows before. Let's close the door. They're, they're just regular windows. They don't have any kind of crazy tint or anything like that. And I do have my wind guards up here, which help me to get ventilation at night. But during the daytime, it can get pretty hot here in the cab because I don't really have anything to go over these windows to protect it from all of the sun and heat. And a lot of times whenever I'm editing videos, I like to sit right here behind my steering wheel because it's just a comfortable upright seated position where I can also kind of be able Able to get in and out pretty easily. However, a lot of times doing that, I get this awful glare from the window. So I decided I was going to address this and with one big swoop, fix a lot of things. Not to mention, if this works out, I may be able to get rid of this curtain and open up some space in the back. And let me show you why I wanna do that. Again, we're working on some finishing touches in here, so I haven't gotten everything in its place, but this is what the curtain looks like from the back. The curtain has been something that has continued to just make me crazy because even though it works super well and keeps out all of the light leaks, and a lot of times I do not know even that the sun is outside, it also visually takes up a lot of my space because I attach it to the bulkhead. So like right here is the overhead bulkhead. And then also up here, it comes all the way out. So this was the easiest way for me to attach it so that I wouldn't have it like magneted to my ceiling, which is where I started out. So this is phase two of my curtain. However, but do you see this from the front? Looking at it here really gives you a good perspective of the space itself. So because this sits so far back, I can go like a foot and a half behind my actual seat before I get to where this curtain attaches. So I lose all of that space in the back. So it makes it extremely hard for me to sit on my bed right here in an upright position because the curtain swings out so far. And I'm not saying this is going to completely solve this issue, but I'm gonna try it out for just a little while to see how I like it. And I will have use with this item anyway. So this is just one possible solution for the bigger problem, but a definite solution for the other problem that I'm having. So let me show you what's in the bag. This is super cool. Okay. As we get into this, you'll notice there's two little curtains in here and these little curtains are cut the right size for my window. Now you're probably looking at this going, how on earth do you attach that though? Well, that's the really super cool part. This has magnets actually sewn into this strip right here. So they're going to secure to my door and then I'll have nice, good coverage across the entirety. But instead of just showing you, let, let me actually show you. Okay, so the way this works is I just pull it out and then find the corner and it should just snap on yep there it goes 
Oh, we're stuck together there. Okay. There we go. Okay, so you're probably looking at this and saying, but th there's a light leak right there. And it, there is, but we're about to fix that too, because guess what? There's also magnets on the side. So we're going to just stretch that over. There we go, that's awesome. I am gonna love this. But just to kind of give you a visual, let's get inside and I'll show you how much it actually fixes this problem for me. Ooh, ah, door closed. Darkness. Now, there is a little bit of light that comes in through the top and I may be able to fix that simply by raising this up just a little bit, but that is so much better already. And then I can just kind of tuck it in down here if I really wanted to. It's not necessary though. I really like this. Oh my goodness, this is awesome. Just to kind of give you an illustration, notice there is no glare coming through this window now. So now if I were to need to work, I could put up my little lap desk right here and then I could just type on away and the glare is gonna be gone off my laptop screen, which is super cool and I really like that. So that is helpful. Now, one thing that I would be a little hesitant with this for an overall long-term solution would be when I crack my windows, I don't know how well it would do if there is like a lot of wind coming through, it may blow them up. So that may not be ideal for replacing this, but we're gonna, we're gonna rock with it for a little while and see how we like it. Um, again, super, super awesome item for a window block for sure. Next up, I have a couple of vanity projects. These are things that are not necessary for the van or for your van, but they're just something I wanted to do to make the van look a little bit more sharp. And I'm really excited because I'm trying some things out. And I think that that's the best thing about van life, trial and error, because you find what it is that works best for you kind of as you go. And so these two projects that I'm about to show you are, are that, but stick around. I'm gonna show you some more practical ones toward the end. Another project for another day. Today, I'm gonna to be adding something to the van that's not necessary, but at the same time is going to help with a couple of things. One, it's gonna look nice. We always like when something looks nice, but also this is going to serve a purpose. Don't mind uh, my seat right here because I still need to fully clean the van, but this is what I'm actually gonna be installing today. These are for my license plates. Texas requires both a front and back plate to be visible. And the one thing that I've noticed is a lot of the license plate holders that are out there actually have a little drop down right here. And on a Texas plate, that covers a portion of the plate that you're not really supposed to cover. So I found these on Amazon and I'm going to be installing them. Now the thing I like about these is they actually have a spot that you can slide the plate into and then you screw it in also. What this is going to do is it's going to give me a little bit of a backing for my plates so that they don't get bent as easily while I'm traveling. Now I realize that's not a problem that most people will ever need to worry about, but for a nomad who is going off road, a lot of times you're gonna end up having that one weird rock that's gonna just clip the bottom of the bumper and your license plate is most likely going to get dented. In fact, out of all the nomads that I've met, a lot of them have super dented license plates. So I'm gonna try to stop that from happening to dimples here by safeguarding it just a little. For today's project, all we need is a Phillips head screwdriver and a little bit of patience. First things first, I'm gonna take off the old plates and slide them into the new plate backing or, or whatever it's called, the plate holder. Just gonna put these screws right here so I don't lose them. And now I'm going to put this into the little slip, there it goes. Everything lines up, nice holes on the back, nice holes on the front. It can actually go over just a little more, there we go. Okay, let's go screw it back in now. Now that looks nice. That looks really nice. Now I did notice something whenever I was looking down here, there's actually no holes for this to go in on the bottom. A 
okay, that project's done. On to the next one. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is clean off the logo really good. I have my pressurized bottle to do this. So I'm just gonna spray some little high pressure there. That's gonna get off a lot of the debris. You don't have to have one of these, but if you do have one, super, super handy. And then we're just going to go over the logo with a paper towel really good. Continuing on the scrubbing. I go on a lot of back roads, so there's a lot of junk on here. For step two, we'll be using the roll of matte black vinyl that I found on Amazon. I'm going to link this below. You'll see it's a smaller roll. And I wanted to get this because we're just doing small decals. I didn't need huge sheets, which you would use for wrapping the rest of your van. So this is pre-cut and should get us all the way through all of the different decals. It's about five feet long. Now this tape is by 3M. And so I'm going to go ahead and pull out just a little bit, enough that would be long enough and wide enough to cover and give me a little excess. So I probably need to cut about here on this. And that way I give myself enough play. So let's go ahead and cut. And this is more than enough right here. So here we go. And then I'm going to tape this piece back up and we'll use it again in a few minutes. The next thing we're going to do is peel the back of the vinyl right here you'll see it comes off nice and easy. I'm going to go ahead and start to peel it and then place it like right there and then stretch it down. And as I'm doing that, I'm gonna start feeling out the design of the logo. And as I do, you'll notice that I am a little bit, a little bit loose on this. I don't want it to fully connect. Okay guys, so my next project is to hang up some photos here. You might recall that before I had tons of cute little magnets in here, but I decided I wanted to do something a little bit more uniform that would also match the interior of my space. So I found these little magnetic frames and they were actually a printed color and I painted them the same color that I have on my little wooden shelves. So that way they would match. So today, whenever we went to CVS, we printed out just a few little adventure photos and uh, I already had one up here that was a Polaroid that the Bus Life Pirates and the Lost Renegades gave me. So I wanted to share that also. So look at these cute adventure photos, guys. These are from some of my adventure buddies and I wanted to share. So the first one that I have here are some of my besties. I have Don D. Riley and of course myself there. This was taken in court site. Then I have this one. This was on my very first adventure. This is my friend Pam and we are at my special place, the Grand Canyon. So this definitely has to go in the adventure mobile. Then we have here a picture of me, Sarah, and Chantel. I definitely wanted to share this. This was from Schooly Palooza. We were having a blast. This was a super cool day right here. And then I have this one. Do you recognize this one? This was Meow Wolf. This is me and Riley. We had such a good time and I visually just love the colors in this one. So I picked this one out. And then I have this one right here. This is my friend Anika, who you've seen on the channel also. Anika and I have been on several different adventures before. This is whenever we were at Moab and we had gone to Arches. This was an absolute blast of a trip. So I wanted to include it also. And then last but not least, I have my family. Now, a fun fact about this family photo, this was actually taken on my very first adventure blog. We had gone to the Mammoth Monument outside of Waco and took this picture. So this was the very first adventure right here, guys. Yay! So this is definitely going on the wall also. Okay guys, after some fitting and some maneuvering, I have everything taken care of and I have one frame left just in case I decide to print something while I'm on the road. Let me show you what we're working with. This is so cute and I love it. This is gonna feel so much like home when I'm in my cozy space. So all together, this project costs less than $10 and makes a huge difference. Here it is. 
But you know what else I love? This beautiful sunny view out the back doors. You know, a lot of times we see things like this on van life where people are just enjoying the space. And we think, oh, that has to be too good to be true. But it's not. You just have to design and create the space that makes you feel happy. But we're not finished with the projects. We have a couple of more and I want to show you a couple of other things that I've picked up and modified along the way to make my life a little bit better on the road. I just like to improve the quality of life anytime I come back to base camp by doing my big projects, but also sometimes those little finishing details and touches really go a long way. And this next project is one of those. On my last project video you saw that I installed this shelf right here and today I'm showing you all of the things that have gone into this shelf to make it so awesome like for example this mirror right here I found this mirror whenever I was shopping at a garage sale believe it or not this thing was less than a dollar and so I picked it up and it was already painted the perfect color to go with my van now I have had this thing sitting and waiting for the perfect time for it to go into the van and finally it had its place but for me to be able to use it, I had to make a few modifications. When I picked up the mirror, it was not in very good shape. In fact, the entire back, it looked like it was starting to come off. So I knew I was going to have to do a little bit of work on it. So I went and purchased some Crafting Gorilla Glue and got to go in on it. I re-secured the entire back. I made sure that the mirror was in fact intact so it wouldn't get scratched. And then I took two of these bad boys. You've seen them on the channel before. These are industrial magnets that I pick up at Harbor Freight. And I took Gorilla Glue and I attached them directly to to the back of the mirror. Now I would pull the back of the mirror out and show you. However, these things are so strong that until I take this mirror away for good, it's probably never going to move realistically. These things are legit. I've purchased these at Harbor Freight. I have purchased more of them on Amazon. They are amazing and they come in two different versions. This version right here with the hook and this version right here without the hook. These things have been monumental in my entire van journey, and I will continue using them in many ways. Like right now, I am using it to hold up my hat. I love this thing though. It is sitting at the perfect height, so whenever it is time for me to put on my makeup in the morning or brush my teeth, I can literally sit on my little area right here and do that and be able to see perfectly. Let me show you. Filming with my cell phone, yay! But as you can see right here, you can totally see how much of my face I would be able to look at. I can put on my makeup, I can brush my teeth, I can do a variety of other things that I might need to do in a mirror. And so that's super convenient. And I still have enough floor space right here where I could actually put my makeup bin to easily access it. So that is another win. But as we were going down, you might have noticed a couple of things. Of course, this right here is my fire extinguisher from GTFO. I'm still so thankful that I haven't had to use it, but glad that I have it. I wanted to keep it nice and easy to access from the outside, especially considering that I will be using this exterior space a lot now that it is summertime. So I wanted to have this right here, but this, this right here was another project. I was talking about wanting to do some kind of neat things in my van and my mom mentioned that she had this little dry erase board and she brought it to me and it was super super cute but it was also super super white and that didn't really match my aesthetic here in the van so again I took my crafting paint and I went to town I painted the outer rim of it so that it would be my same color I finished up this project, but I needed some dry erase markers. So I went to Walmart and picked these up. These are magnetic dry erase markers. So I have a variety of colors and now I can leave little messages. I can make notes to myself. I can write down my grocery list if I need to. If I'm away from my van and one of my friends happens to come up, they can actually leave me a note, which is kind of cool. I can sit it on the outside of the van also. So uh, all in all, I consider this to be a huge upgrade, a low price point, something that is absolutely just fun and definitely fits who I am as a van dweller. Okay, here's all the bright colors and I really love it because now I can write in different colors. I can draw little doodles. I can prioritize things based on color. And I don't know that I'll necessarily leave these right here because again, these are gonna get knocked around probably. But for now, they're gonna try it out in this vicinity. If this does not work, I also have a pin cup that I can put them in. So there's a couple different options. 
you can probably see there's a string of lights here and we're going to be securing the rest of those in a minute i'm going to show you how we do it as well as laying some shelf paper but look at this so a lot of you ask me how i secure different items and up until now it hasn't been an issue because most of them have been going with the flow of gravity as I'm driving. However, this shelf kind of defies the odds when it comes to the gravity. And so I wanted to make sure things didn't fall out this way. So I picked up some bungee straps right here and these are super easy to use. All I do is pull them down whenever I'm at a location. But whenever I'm back on the road again, part of my departure routine will be to snap these into place and that will keep everything from being able to fall out or at least it will give it enough flex where it may not fall out we will see picked up two of them for the larger area and then one for this area up here sometimes a simple solution can go a long way and bungees are that in van life bungees can help you with so many things guys invest in some bungees they're cheap they can be found anywhere and um they're really awesome i've been using bungees for quite some time okay for this next one we're going back into the van and now we're going to go ahead and secure these lights now let me show you what it looks like whenever i have them secured in place already see this these are little fairy lights the same ones that i use up here but i have taken them and secured them with little command hooks these are awesome and they're super inexpensive i got a pack of 20 of them for about three dollars and 87 cents and i needed a few more of them so i got some extras in fact maybe a little overkill on the extra but i got 40 more of them because i like them so much okay starting off we just open them up and i may or may not save this packaging Oh, I can save it. Yes. <laughs> okay. So these are what they look like. They come in a sheet that looks like this. And each one of these is an individual hook. So now I'm just going to pop them apart. And I like to do it in rows of three. So I just kind of do this. Here we go. They're pretty sturdy considering that they're just made of cheap plastic. So I'm kind of pleased with them so far. Okay. So after we do that, then we pop off each individual one there's what they look like right there so as you can see just a small little tiny hook that's going to go perfectly up under my shelf the next step is to get the backing so again I'm just going to take those and put them in half and then I'm going to pull off one of these and then they have two pull tabs one on each side so I just removed the first one and now we're going to attach it to the little plastic piece and to do this we just set it on top push it down really really good and then we will take off the other pull tab so we can apply it to the shelf now to apply this i will just stick it up here and i will line it up with the shelf right there i need to make sure that the hook is facing inward on these and it is so there we go and then i just push it into place and then after that, I can stretch the cord over. And then I'm gonna do a wrap and then that's secure. Now I'm gonna complete that process on the bottom shelf as well as the top shelf so that I can have everything super illuminated. And I wanted to do this because it creates a different kind of feel than the overhead lights. The overhead lights are everywhere and they reflect off of the white and they get super, super bright even on the cooler color settings. So this is just gonna give me kind of a nice glowing look without it having to be super, super bright in the van, which is nice for nighttime whenever I'm editing or just trying to relax a little bit. Okay, next up, I'm adding in these bins. I purchased these at Walmart, but they also have them on Amazon. And they're just regular storage bins, collapsible ones. And I'm actually going to put all my kitchen stuff in these across the way. Now, you might remember that I had a shelf that was right here, and I was storing all of my kitchen things in it. I liked the access that I had to my back table. But there were a few things that I didn't love about the space when it was here. I couldn't get in and out. Now I can. So I'm going to be adding that where it's still just an arm's distance away from my table, but at the same time will make way more sense. It really is all about trial and error. And I've tried three or four different setups and now I'm excited to know that this is going to work for me. Now, will I change it again? Who knows? Maybe, maybe in the future I will. But as of right now, 
of all the methods that I've tested. I know I want access to my kitchen items. I want it to be easy and I want it to be where I can also access those when it's raining. And so by putting them on this shelf right here, I'll be able to do that, which is super awesome. Now, while I'm bringing those out, I want to draw your attention to the other project that I just completed. And it looks kind of messy in here again, but this is okay because I'm in progress. I have this item and this item right here that are a bit heavier weighing down a brand new floor. Now looking a little closer at this floor, it might look familiar. This is the same kind of flooring that I used before. These are actually just bath mats that I picked up from Walmart. I really liked them because they have a little bit of squishiness to them, but they also have suction cups. So once I secure these in place and then they sit in the heat, this starts to meld a little bit better with the floor. Now you might notice though, I did have to cut this because the shelf kind of cuts into the space. Normally this would go way over to here, but because of the shelf, I wanted to, instead of trying to put one of these under it where I couldn't take it out, I wanted to cut it to fit so I can change this out anytime that I want to. But for now, we're going to make sure it's weighted down just enough so that it won't go back into its rolled up position. Also, I was going to put shelf paper on the shelf that I have these also just to prevent it from making a rattling noise, but I tried it without it and it does not. So I'm going to just leave this one without the shelf paper. And the reason why I wanted to do that was because the more that I pull in and out these, the more that it's gonna just like wrinkle and crinkle it. So this would become a problematic headache for me probably in the long run. So I think I'm saving myself some pain by opting out of this one. Okay, so there are those all completely in. Now, one thing that I don't love is the fact that these are open. So if I do enjoy the placement of these, I might find some that have a top on them. We will see though, we will see. Whoo, there's a lot of projects going on, but I'm really happy with how they're turning out. The overall look of the van definitely feels more homey. I feel so happy with how it's turning out. And again, I started out with a no-build van build and I'm at this stage now because I've been traveling for so long and have listened to the road as it has told me what I need, what I would like, what would make life a little bit more comfortable. And I've changed and made adjustments not only as I've seen fit based on my wants, but also as money allows. Out. Don't ever rush to feel like you have to have everything right all at once because you don't. Along the way, there's going to be bumps and bruises. You saw that one of the shelves that I've installed had actually broken, so I had to fix it. And in doing so, I was able to kind of troubleshoot some things and see some other areas that I could make corrections. And there's nothing wrong with that. I hope you have enjoyed coming along with me to see these projects and kind of be a part of the action. Again, all of the links for the things that I've mentioned are in the description box below. And I hope that that makes it a little easier if you're interested in them. Till next time, guys. Bye.